If I had to grow my Pinterest account from absolute zero this year, this would be my exact plan to hit 10 million views in one year. We're talking what I would do day one, day two, day seven. So grab a pen and a piece of paper because you will want to follow this plan exactly to get the quickest and best results. So day one, what do we do? First, I want to be on a Pinterest business account, not a personal one. Now that I have a profile, I want to use a strong profile photo. Or if you're not building a personal brand, you could use here your logo, but it has to look good in a circle like this. If your logo doesn't fit this shape, well, you either change your logo or use your photo for status. Now you need to make sure that your profile name and your short bio help establish your positioning. All three of these things should match and make sense together. Say you're in the travel niche. Travel photos make more sense for you. If you are in the fashion niche, lifestyle photos would look great for your profile picture. My username is not Anastasia1234, it's Anastasia Blogger, see? Which makes sense for my niche, and I was lucky that it was available on Pinterest. If your exact domain name or your brand name is not available as a username, try to add something that would still make sense for your niche. For example, if I were an Instagram marketing expert, I would make um, a username IG Anastasia. My profile title includes some of the words that describe what I teach online business and blogging tips. Now this about field. You won't believe it, but it shouldn't be about you. It should be about your audience. It should tell them why they should follow you, what they will get from your content. If you tell them in this short bio how you can help them, you're already ahead of the game. Now you're trying to grow from scratch, right? Your account is small, but you have one advantage. You can learn from your competitors and do what worked best for them. So day two, competitor research. So I do it for myself and I always do it when I'm helping clients grow on Pinterest. I look at the top five or 10 established accounts in the niche. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. If someone is successful on Pinterest in your niche, that's because they are doing something right. So why don't you look at their accounts and learn a thing or two from them? And how can this process look like? First, think what is the main focus keyword that describes your niche? One keyword or maybe several main keywords. Say we're looking for homemade beauty products. I will assume that you have a blog that gives different recipes for DIY beauty products. You need to click here on the profile button because we don't need to look at the pins. We want to check the biggest profiles in your niche. Open those top accounts. Right on this page, you will see they're usually showing up here in search results because they have a large following. When you open their pages, you will also see that normally they will have quite high monthly viewers. The top three accounts that I opened had 8 million, 10 million, and 1.5 million monthly viewers. And why do you need to check this? You want to see what is the potential of growth for you in this niche. I picked this niche as an example because it's quite narrow and it still has several pretty strong accounts. But if I searched for more generic beauty accounts, I would find there are dozens of accounts with 10 plus million monthly viewers. But you don't want to start on Pinterest with a niche that has very few strong accounts. If no one achieved any results with your niche on Pinterest, it is a sign that there is no audience for your niche on this platform. In that sense, Google SEO traffic might be a better place for you to start. Pinterest is usually best for niches that are broad enough and if you go after something very new like a unicorn narrow niche with little to none search volume even on Google, then forget about it. People will not look for it on Pinterest for sure. The next thing to check in those top profiles of your competitors is to look at their most recent activity. Are they creating idea pins? What type of pins they're creating? Are these video pins or mostly image pins? Take a piece of paper and make your notes. If you see something that you like or you find is smart that your competitors do, then point it out. Now you need to click on the Saved tab and it will show you all the boards that they have on their profile. Check what are the names of their boards. You will need this list of boards. 
But your research shouldn't stop here on Pinterest. You should open their websites and check what exactly they do there. What kind of content do they create that resonates so well with the Pinterest audience? You should open their websites on a mobile device too to get the same experience as most of the Pinterest users will get. Because the majority of Pinterest audience is on mobile devices using the Pinterest app. So check how easy it is to share something from your competitor's site on Pinterest. Maybe they have a few vertical images that work perfectly well as pins to be saved. Or maybe they have somewhere a plugin or a button that encourages users to follow them on Pinterest. And you shouldn't move forward before you made some notes about the design style that you see on your most successful competitors' accounts. What kind of fonts and colors work best for your niche? Take your notes again. All of those little things will help you grow your account. Now, a short story time for you guys. I recently had a client who told me she has been repinning hundreds of pins daily. Initially, it was working well and her impressions were growing slowly from zero, but it didn't help her get any traffic to her site, so she was getting discouraged. Well, obviously, it didn't help with traffic because she didn't focus on creating her own pins. She was just sending all the traffic to those other sites she was repinning from. Hundreds of pins a day. It's a lot of work for nothing. Now, let's make it clear first. Doing a lot of things that aren't working doesn't mean that you will get any results. It just means that you're wasting your time and potentially even hurting your account. There are many things beginners do on Pinterest thinking it might help them like doing follow for follow or commenting with your links on Pinterest or sending direct messages to other users asking to maybe join their group boards. But one day, boom, and your account gets suspended. You don't want that for yourself, right? So let's continue with the right steps that will take you from zero to 10 million monthly viewers on Pinterest. So day three, you need to start understanding Pinterest SEO and create your Pinterest boards. Pinterest is not just a social media site. It's also a search engine. It shows you visual search results. It tracks users' activity on the platform. It knows their interests and their history of search queries. So you've got to play the game on their terms. There is an algorithm. There are keywords that people might search for and find your account. You need to do the keyword research and know how to describe whatever your account is about with keywords. You need the main focus keyword or maybe a couple of them. Then you need to find your secondary, your additional keywords. And all of this should be reflected in your profile name and in your profile about field. Then you also need to apply SEO to every single board that you create on your Pinterest account and to every single pin that you publish. And I've got an in-depth video on my channel that is focused on Pinterest SEO specifically. I will link to it in the description below, but here I will give you a quick idea of how things work. So you can watch that video later. As a user, when you type in some keyword, Pinterest shows you relevant pins as a result. They can be idea pins, which are like stories on Instagram, or video pins, or regular image pins. But they will all be relevant to your initial search. You will see additional keyword suggestions showing up below the search bar. These are all popular keywords related to the main keyword that you searched for. Use this search bar as your first and entirely free Pinterest keyword research tool to get at least a feeling of what people are looking for in your niche, what kind of keywords they might be typing on Pinterest. I recommend you to get back to your notebook now and write down a list of keywords that you find to be the most interesting for you to create content about. Or maybe the most popular keywords in your niche, which you should use to create your Pinterest boards. By the way, you can filter search results on Pinterest by profiles as well which means that you can find the most relevant user accounts in your niche. And this is how you could also be found by your potential audience on Pinterest. So make sure you watch my video on Pinterest SEO and optimize your entire profile. When you do so, make sure that you print out and also go over my Pinterest SEO checklist that you can download for free. I'll give you a link in the description below. Now we are on day four, create content on your site and promote it on Pinterest. Well, this you should do on day four and moving forward for the rest of the year. You can start a Pinterest account when you don't have a website 
or maybe even if you just have a few pages on it. But you cannot run an account with just a few pages for a long time. So make sure that you keep creating a lot of different page URLs on your site because be it a blog or an e-commerce site, it won't be easy for you to grow if you just have five pages. You cannot create hundreds of pins for each of your five pages because it will quickly make your account look spammy and repetitive. It doesn't mean that you need to have a huge team to keep up with the pace and create multiple pieces of content for your site daily. But you should strive to create at least one great piece of content on your site per week. Now we are on day five. Make your pinning plan. You need to know about all the different types of pins on this platform. You have regular image pins, which are linked to your page URL and usually they generate the highest amount of traffic. Then you also have video pins. Um, they're vertical videos, which should be really short, about 6 to 15 hours in, is enough. Uh, video pins also can be linked to a specific page on your site. Wait, what did I say 6 hours for a short video? I was just checking if you were listening. I'm dropping here the golden nuggets and if you want the best ROI from watching this video, you better grab a pen and a paper and point out that videos on Pinterest should be only 6 to 15 seconds long. This is official recommendation on Pinterest's video guidelines. Idea pins are the most recent pin format, so they get an additional boost in the Pinterest algorithm. Idea pins include several slides. Each slide can be made of a short video or an image. And I recommend, by the way, to use a short video as the first slide in idea pins because this way your idea pins will look more dynamic in the Pinterest feed. Then I would highly recommend you to use my favorite time-saving strategy, content repurposing. On Pinterest, it looks like this for me. For one idea pin, I need to create a short video and an image and then upload them first um, as first and second slide. Then I will upload the same video as a separate video pin and save it today. And I'll upload a separate image pin from the second slide of this idea pin and schedule it for a week later. Video pins and image pins allow you to add a destination URL, so that will drive you traffic. Idea pins don't drive you traffic directly, but they're great for growing your account overall, including following numbers and impressions. They're also helping you get more traffic to your regular image pins. I published another video explaining how creating idea pins for a month on a daily basis helped me grow my traffic by 50% and I've shown how this works in the Pinterest algorithm. So check the link to this video up there and in the description below. Now we're on day six, improve your pin design. Creating different format of pins is good, but it's not enough. You need to create beautiful and click-worthy pins that people will love to save to their boards. And pins with intriguing text overlay that will make people click on the image and visit your site. I cannot stress enough how important is the visual appeal of your content on Pinterest. Users who don't care about pretty and visually appealing content don't hang out on this platform. Now, this doesn't mean that you are doomed to never grow on Pinterest if you are not a graphic designer or if you cannot afford to hire one. I'm not a graphic designer and my account has grown to 10 million monthly viewers over time and I use Canva templates to create most of my pins. Canva is a free online tool that gives you thousands of templates for different formats of pins, including video pins. And you can start a free Canva account using my link anastasiablogger.com slash Canva. And all you need to do there is just customize the templates by maybe changing text overlay or replacing background images. Canva also has a huge collection of stock photos right inside the tool, so you can just search for whatever you need, uh, drag and drop the image, and you're good to go. When you use these Canva templates, my best advice for you, if you're not a designer and you're not sure about your choices of fonts and colors, just stick as much as possible uh, with what is already offered in the template. Because sometimes people take a pretty template and uh, they change it to a point when it becomes kind of the opposite of what's visually appealing. And you want to use the templates specifically because they already have good fonts and color combinations and they're already selected for you. So don't try to fix what 
already works well. Now, within my program Pinterest SEO Traffic Secrets, I go into the nitty-gritty of creating beautiful and viral pins. And if you're interested in learning more about what kind of pins go viral on Pinterest and much more, you can check out more about this paid program in the description below. Now we are on day 7 – batching content. Now, this step is entirely up to you. If you like to log into your Pinterest account several times a day and post everything manually, you can do that. For me, I would probably try to batch everything what is possible to batch. So, for instance, you can schedule video pins and image pins, but for now you cannot schedule idea pins. You can plan pins on Pinterest scheduler, native scheduler, but only up to two weeks in advance and only one board at a time. So I prefer to use Tailwind Scheduler. And you can create a free account with Tailwind using my link anastasiablogger.com slash Tailwind. And it allows you, by the way, also to schedule um, Instagram and Facebook posts. Anyway, what I would uh, normally do, I would schedule in Tailwind every image pin or video pin that I created to about three most relevant boards and I would use a seven-day interval in Tailwind. But I understand that batching can be not a good idea for everyone. Maybe if you are a stay-at-home mom and you have many short periods of time while your baby sleeps throughout the day, uh, then you can just do a little bit of work every time. Or maybe if you're a student who is on a long holiday, maybe you have a whole week to sit and create content three months in advance for your Pinterest account. Now, what do you do next? <sighs> that was a lot of information, so I hope if you are still with me, leave me a comment below. Just say something like, I'm still here. And I can tell you, if you stick to these strategies, it is totally doable to reach 10 million monthly viewers on Pinterest in a year. I know it because I've done it this way and I had students who achieved the same results. But I will leave you with a few bonus tips that you can implement beyond that first week um, and use it for the rest of the year. So bonus tip number one, pay attention to your analytics on Pinterest. If you see some of your pins are getting traction, then study analytics for these pins. Because Pinterest doesn't only give you the analytics for the overall account, you can also open analytics on a particular pin. Be a learner, try to understand why this particular pin stands out and what makes it go viral. Because marketing is not about hard truths, it's all about experimenting. Now, bonus tip number two, don't join group boards. I told you to do competitor research in the first week, but one thing I wanted to note is that a lot of older accounts on Pinterest might be in lots of group boards, but it doesn't mean that you have to waste your time trying to join them as well. It only seems like these uh, older accounts are successful because of the group boards. In reality, posting to group boards used to be a strategy that worked over three years ago, but then Pinterest has changed their algorithm and announced that large, generic and spammy group boards will lose distribution power and they're pretty much useless now. So most established accounts still have some of those group boards because maybe they just forgot to delete them or maybe some of these group boards are actually their own group boards and so they're worried if they deleted them they would lose some of their or some of the data in their analytics. Now, bonus tip number three, study what works in your niche. So I like to say that pins with text overlay are more efficient. And that's true for the most part. But in some niches, people want the image without any distractions on it. For example, let's take art or maybe wallpapers. So users might want to save them as a background on their smartphone. They want the image and they don't want any text on it. The same goes, for example, for 3D art or architecture. People just want to save the exact photo and the text on the image would just ruin it. You will only discover this when you do your own research for your niche. So don't put the pressure on you to reinvent the wheel. Do what already works in your niche to get the quickest results. Now that you have the plan to grow, I also want you to avoid the worst mistakes on Pinterest that I see people do all the time. So now you should watch that video up there and I'll see you there.